slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I'm on the hijack with pocket jacks. Against my better judgment, due to recent failures with jacks and the sight of the elderly gentleman on the button, I still race at 15 and get calls from both him and the big blind. After a nice flop for jacks, I bet 15 and the button snap raises to 40. While normally this raise would make little sense, I think this time I'm just behind. I then decide it's time to rebrand pocket jacks. Some call them hooks. Others go with a name I won't say out loud for fear of the Brad Owen legal defense team. Instead, I'll call them JJ Watt. Because yeah, he's good, but doesn't seem to win much. Deja vu with the marvelous Mr. Watt. I raise with him again from the low jack and get calls from the high jack, cut off, and small blind. After yet another good flop for jacks, I bet $20 that I'll surely never see again, and all three players call. On this turn, small blind leads for 40. All session, this guy's been donk leading with nothing but a draw, so if it was heads up, I'd snap call this bet. But since I had four callers on the flop, and now there are two players behind, while I was probably ahead on the flop, it's doubtful I'm ahead of all three players now. So I tell JJ I'm putting him on injured reserve. <laughs> And as the other players reveal their hands, it does make sense why they all stuck around. But let's not lose sight of what's important here. In that pocket jacks went down in flames yet again, and the hot streak keeps on rolling. That's why you, you work so hard. That's why you practice. That's why you watch film. That's why you study. That's why, that's why you play this game, man. I'm under the gun with an overrated defensive end. Look up to see eight opponents with an average age of 110 years old and fold preflop. This wasn't a real hand, of course, but a part of me wonders if it could be a smart long-term strategy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey Dave, Slow Poker here. First time, long time. Would you ever advise folding Jack's preflop? Is that even a real thing people do? It's a, it's a real, real yeah. thing, without a doubt. At this point, I decide that if I can't win Big Pot's post-flop with a five-time pro bowler who's only won three playoff games, I'll just have to use other hands to win Tiny Pot's preflop. Oh, by myself. I'm on the hijack with 9 native clubs, race to 10, and get calls from the cutoff and the button short stack. While I've only got a gut shot draw, as the preflop aggressor, I've got all the big pocket pairs in range and should keep the betting lead, and maybe just take down the pot right now with a $15 bluff. But instead, both players call, so I prepare to either double barrel turn or wave the white flag. And there aren't many clean turn cards that'll improve my equity, unless, of course, it's that card. Now I'm almost always ahead. There's a small chance of king nine, and I rule out ace king given the lack of a preflop three bet. So I bet 20, leaving a little room to reevaluate if I'm raised. But that size does let the drawing hands keep drawing. After the cutoff folds and the button calls, the river makes me kind of mad. Now some random nine may feel compelled to call any bet, so I try and bluff him off a chop with 90. As he tanks, it's clear he's got some nine, and I'm pre-grumbling that he's about to call, despite all the ace-kings in my range that have him crushed. And sure enough, as I steam, he points to the two spades on the flop, as if to suggest he had to call on all streets. To which I reply, calling pre with a marginal 9-5 is almost always pretty bad, but especially bad short stacked. Then on the flop, you call 15 with a bad flush draw? Okay, fine. But on that turn, you think you've turned open-ended, but three of those outs are dirty, where any ace crushes you, and I could easily have all the big aces here. You don't know my whole cards, at least, I hope not. So while you've got a fair amount of equity against my actual holdings, what if I had king nine, or ace king, or ace king of spades? If you're gonna draw, draw to the nuts. Sure, you river to straight, but it's just some straight. Don't make the rookie mistake of forgetting what you were chasing. I asked the button if he'd like me to elaborate further, but the dealer informs me that the player left an hour ago and I'm card splaining to an empty chair. Was that? Yeah, oh, I fold. Of all the greatest poker icons, tell us your favorites, spades and clubs. And now, the triumphant return of the beloved Slow Poker miniseries, I didn't ask for this. A bunch of limpers make me play a repugnant Jack-3 offsuit. I flop trips and it checks around. The turn changes nothing, so I lead for 10 and get raised to 25. This makes almost no sense, so I call. And of course, the river brings an 8. I check, he bets 40, and I get black and white episode 2 nightmares. But instead of handing 40 bucks to this guy as a reward for playing bad poker, I fold this time. And I use that cash to buy the golden horseshoe lodged inside his ass. Facing two limps, I'm on the button with king-queen offsuit and raise to 20. The big blind and the first limper call, and on a king-high flop, I bet 35, and both players quickly muck. A garden variety hand, but it leads to some table talk from the big blind. I'm making the vlog, son. Oh, you want to be on the vlog, son? Are you sure you want to be on the vlog, son? Let's get you on the vlog, son. 
After a whopping five limps, I've got tens in the small blind, raised to 20, and get called by three of the limpers, including vlog son from under the gun. Ever since this guy sat down with a massive stack, he's been extremely aggressive, raising 10x preflop with garbage like King 7 offsuit, overbetting with air, we all know the type. So I just have to play my game and stay patient. And the flop rewards that patience. I bet 45 and vlog son calls while the cutoff and button fold. The turn brings in the most obvious draw, and I bet 75, fully prepared to face a raise. But he flats, and this player would 100% raise with the straight, so I immediately rule out Queen Jack. This river shouldn't change anything. If he's got 7 6 of clubs or jack 7 of clubs, then he's getting all my chips. But assuming he doesn't, and if I want all his chips, I could bet this river. Or I could check to either A, induce a bluff, or B, let him value on himself with what he perceives to be the best hand. Let's do that second thing. Good call. Super. You made the vlog, son. I get to be on the vlog? Oh, uh, yeah, no, so, uh, I was referring, you are my son, yes, but this was, um, this player under the gun, I, uh, induced him into valuing himself and doubling me up. Can I have a snack? Yeah, yeah, let's get you a snack. As I'm stacking Vlog Sun's chips, there are three limps to me, and I looked at a pocket queens, raised to 25, and get three callers. The flop is far too generous. I bet 50, everyone folds, and I'm hungry, so let's hit the road. But before I do, as stipulated in section 4 of the Poker Vlogger bylaws, each fiscal year a vlogger must include at least 30 seconds of predefined b-roll footage. So let's just bang this out now. Please watch as I drive to the poker, get drone footage, walk to the poker, take the escalator, put safety first, play slow motion poker, amass chips, break for lunch, apply balsamic, rate and review, visit the men's room, play more slow motion poker, record gratuitous footage of chips, rack up, watch a headless cashier count cash, show the cash again, make it rain at the club with the boys, realize I'm too old to make it rain, enter a club, or ever say, the boys. And that'll do it for episode 3 of Slow Poker. If you do me a solid, and like and subscribe, my son says he'll give you one of his Cool Ranch Doritos. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. You had one job to do!